if you go to youtube.com and you type in is rise of kingdoms it will show you that the most searched questions are is rise of kingdoms good is rise of kingdoms worth playing in 2023 and is rise of kingdoms pay to win now there's a couple of other things here like is rise of kingdoms dying these are all questions that somebody who is a brand new player might be asking themselves or somebody who's considering starting the game but they're really not sure so today I'm gonna answer all of these questions for you I've been making rise of kingdoms content on YouTube for years now I've literally made hundreds of videos about this game and I've been playing since right around launch so I've seen the entire lifespan of rise of kingdoms all the way from when it was a tiny game that I played with some of my co-workers throughout the pandemic when the game exploded got super super popular and all the way up until today I still play the game every single day so let's start off with is rise of kingdoms good obviously that question is super subjective like do you like city builder games on mobile devices yes or no like that's literally what it comes down to but even amongst city builder games there's so many to choose there's so many to pick that why you know why rise of kingdoms well I think that rise of kingdoms probably is the best city builder game on mobile and of course as you can see my cursor here you can play this game on PC as well and there's a couple of reasons why I think that this is the best city builder for uh for mobile and that's because of open field movement okay you can send out your army anywhere in the world and you can drop them down you can attack things all over the place and you might be saying omniarch that doesn't sound like a big deal but in other city builder games it kind of is in other city builder games you have to choose a target and then send an attack at that target and then you basically can't control that target at all until you hit right uh you can sometimes retreat at a cost and a lot of times you'll have to basically increase your march speed with some sort of currency whether it's an item or premium currency like gems in rise of kingdoms there's ways to increase your march speed but in general uh you get what you get okay there's plenty to do in the game and you know again if you like city builder games where you are leveling up buildings whether it's focusing on you know economic technology to build up your city faster or it's focusing on your troops and your combats there's a lot to love here right like do you like games where you can play as different historical civilizations of course a lot of you who are watching right now might be starting or considering to start rise of kingdoms because of the new Greece civilization this is the latest and greatest civilization you can pick in the game if you're wondering like as a new player should you play as Greece the answer is no this is a very good late game civilization based on the stats here but it's not a great civilization to start with also it's worth noting that your civilization really is a cosmetic sort of late game micro optimization so really like is this the best no but does it really matter uh, a little bit but not really that much so if you just like how the buildings look and you want to play a game as ancient Greece totally go for it you're going to be fine but that's just the reality of the different civilizations uh if you guys want a really good early game civilization to pick you can either pick Germany or France France gives you uh Joan of Arc who is the best early game gatherer and Germany gives you action point recovery and also troop training speed which is great for defeating the PVE content out in the world to progress your account faster and that's what the action point recovery is for and then the training speed obviously is you're just going to gain slightly more troops every single day because of that training speed so that is uh kind of my two quick choices Britain is a good uh, a close third I would say same with China but really I would say uh France or Germany is the best way to start okay with that being said I think a lot of players who are interested in rise of kingdoms probably have played other games like civilization right uh and the game looks very similar even like Pericles right here for example he looks very similar in this game as he does to civilization and that's the case for a lot of different commanders right uh we have even commanders like Sargon is shared uh, amongst both games there's a lot of commanders here that are shared um, amongst both games and is the game like Civ nah, I mean yes it is a city builder game right and you are playing as a um you know as an ancient civilization but I would say obviously the monetization strategy is very different which we're going to talk about later in the video when we get cover like whether it's pay to win or not you know so yes there are some overlaps and in fact this game used to be called rise of civilizations back when it first came out they had to change the name because they couldn't get the I guess they couldn't get the rights to uh the civilization I guess branding in certain countries probably because it is similar to Civ that's my best guess I literally have no idea I'm not a lawyer but yes to answer the question is rise of kingdoms good I think it's good I think you know I never really played city builder games until this I played Clash of Clans but I think that's a very different type of game this game is not like Clash of Clans at all uh, and that's one of the questions that I see 
a lot with like my beginner guide videos and things like that players say oh well it just looks like a worse clash of clans like it's literally not even close to clash of clans like players who um or people who say that or compare the two games like it's literally like comparing overwatch to call of duty like yeah they're first person shooters but like they're not even close right so if you're looking for a clash of clans replacement uh this isn't really going to be it like for example it doesn't matter where your buildings are in your city there's literally nothing inside your walls that matters regarding when someone's hitting you like some, when some other player is attacking you the only thing that you can do is set your garrison right which there is a lot of strategy involved with picking the right garrison to, to defend your city but you don't have to worry about like you know in clash of clans you have to like build your walls and make mazes and set traps and all this other stuff uh and some players love that and of course that game is mega popular rise of kingdoms is not like that so rise of kingdoms is my first city builder game i think it is the best city builder game on mobile right now and the fact that you can play on pc is even better there is cr there's cross progression so i can play the same account on my phone as my pc and vice versa so yes all of that is the same and i think the game is really good now is this game worth playing in 2023 this game first came out i think in uh it was either august or september of 2018 and so the game is like five you know coming up on five years old now and you know players are asking like is it worth playing like the game's already really old like is it worth it right and i think that's a completely fair question to ask yourself a lot of times mobile games you know they live for a while and then they die off and that's pretty much it right i mean you look at games like game of war fire age is a great example of this right the game was mega popular for like two years and then it was dead it was gone and i think you know times are changing a little bit i think mobile games because they are so big and so massive these days i think developers are continuing to support the games much longer than they used to back in the day back when mobile games first came out they were sort of like pump and dumps right where you know they would basically developers would make a bunch of games and whichever one hit is the one that they would focus on like a ton and then they would take all the money that they made from that game and they would put it into a new game and forget about the old one or just kind of keep it on life support i think a lot of players you know this still happens right this is still the case for a lot of games but i think that this game is um worth playing in 2023 to answer the question i do think that it is worth it is it past its prime i don't know um it's really hard to like say really like you can only answer that question looking backwards and you don't really know what's going to happen in the future right uh, i think this game did really blow up in 2020 because everyone was inside but you know if you look at google trends which let me just pull this up this is the worldwide google trend for rise of kingdoms their web search right over the past five years um like i said the game came out sometime in uh late 2018 right around here and then the game got pretty popular in 2019 to be honest with you and then you can see obviously it spiked in early 2020 that's because literally all mobile games and just gaming in general spiked around that time but that wasn't the most popular the game ever was which is actually pretty shocking the game was most popular in uh early 2022 now i do think that there was you know uh, obviously there's a note here from google saying that they improved their data collection but there was also like a meme going around around about rise of kingdoms around this time right the oh i have 20 million power and rise again you know that type of thing so i think that there's some you know some of this data is skewed a little bit because of just general memes out in you know out in in other social media platforms but in general the the, the game right now um in 2023 is more popular than it was back when the world was shut down right so like literally like the game has survived and performed really well and continues to perform super well uh like even in 2022 it's low point was still higher than like all of 2021 and late 2022 right so um i think the game is doing better now than it was in the pandemic which is like mind-blowing to me now that everyone's back back to their regular life and so you know when players ask like is rise of kingdoms worth playing right let's look at youtube search i'm just i'm just curious here yeah so we're about the same as we were back in 2021 for youtube search but the reason players ask if the game is worth playing is because you don't want to spend your time and money on a game that could be dead in six to twelve months right and you also want to know like is there a big community there to play with players don't want to you know the accomplishments that you have in a game like this only matter if there was if there's someone there to see it right the amount of kill points that you have in rise of kingdoms literally doesn't matter if there's no other players to like kind of be like oh my god look how many kill points he has right um and so you know it, the real question is is the community strong yes is the game dying right now no the game is actually not dying i think every couple of months there's a big you know drama that happens with an update and everyone's like oh my god the game's dying oh my god everyone's quitting right i've i have fallen for that many times okay i'm guilty you can look back on my channel there's been tons of videos where i ask myself is rise of kingdoms dying and the reason that i ask and the reason that i care so much is because i'm so invested in this game i've spent literally years of uh, you know my life playing it and making content about it and i make money from this youtube 
YouTube channel, right? So I'm very invested in the health of this game. And so if the game is dying, I want to be the one to talk about it because it, it, it worries me. Right. And so despite that, uh, currently right now in July of 2023, no, I do not think the game is dying. Yes. The community is absolutely massive. And there's a big community, not only just in your kingdom, in your server, but also over on discord, the official rise of kingdoms, discord. Um, I have a discord down below. There's other discords for other content creators like Chiskel, for example. So there's a really big community here. The community is not dying. Okay. They're constantly adding new servers to the game. I mean, as you can see here, this server is a little over a day old. This server is six hours old. Okay. Um, um, and we're at over 3000 servers now uh you know are all these servers active no, no they're not a lot of them are um pretty you know a lot of the old ones are dead like let's just be honest a lot of the old servers are dead so but regardless they're still adding new servers which means there's still tons of new players who are playing the game if they if there weren't a ton of new players playing the game they would just put these players into other kingdoms and so you know yes there are still tons of new servers coming online there's still tons of new players joining the game and I think that's because you know there is actually a pretty good marketing team behind rise of kingdoms I know a lot of their memes come from their ads right which is just it's true they're very meme worthy okay uh but the marketing team you know like with the with the Greece civilization cinematic it was really good right their marketing team is really good I have to I have to give them credit right like they have kept the game um in a good spot for the last couple of years and they market this game aggressively there's probably other you know content creators that you know that have been sponsored by rise of kingdoms and if not you may have seen a rise of kingdoms ad before this video the community is alive the game is not dying uh there's tons of new servers that are coming online and the marketing team for rise of kingdoms is honestly really good and they have a very sort of predictable marketing cycle um right now in summer is when their biggest marketing push happens they also do another smaller um or i guess a decent size marketing push around holiday right so like the christmas uh holiday season and then i think that makes sense most companies do that so you know this is a great time to start playing rise of kingdoms because there's so many new players who are joining right now and you probably can find um a really new group of players to play with on the official rise of kingdoms discord or on my discord or some other uh discord or community or even just talk in your kingdom chat right new kingdoms typically have a really active chat and uh you know you're going to be able to make friends there and you're going to be able to play the game with other people who are enjoying it and i think that that is really nice it's really unique for this game i think the community here is kind of what keeps me around i really do like it so you know yes there is a big community here and it is i think worth playing in 2023 now the other question is you know if this game is um, pay to win then how can a new player compete with an older player and we're going to talk about that a little bit more in depth in, in just a moment but i do want to just say that the way that the new servers work is um the developers have implemented a system of matchmaking where new servers will only ever be matched up against new servers for the biggest pvp events such as kvk or kingdom versus kingdom in other games it's known as server versus server or svs uh essentially these are really big like 45 to 60 day uh events like they're long events where your kingdom goes up against other kingdoms and the way that the developers have this set up is that new kingdoms will only fight new kingdoms so you don't have to worry about you know going up against older players uh for the first two i think our first three seasons okay um i guess technically two so there's the before kvk even happens you're playing with new players kvk one you're going to be matched up against newer players around your um around your continent or basically other kingdoms nearby then in kvk2 it'll be the same thing you'll go up against other kingdoms that are in kvk2 so you're not going to go up against the newest kingdoms and you're not going to go up against the older players the problems really start around kvk3 and beyond um and and what's called season of conquest and this is you know i can even show you in, in the corner here because we're about to enter but the season of conquest is um basically the end game okay this is the end game of rise of kingdoms and this is where the developers have historically struggled with um you know putting new players against older players because you can migrate around to different kingdoms and once a kingdom is in the season of conquest basically uh you know you, people can migrate to that kingdom people can migrate out of the kingdom to other kingdoms play with other players right and so you know if you are just entering the season of conquest and you go up against a player like me who's been playing for four years then you're going to have a bad time, right? Because, you know, I have all these, a lot of, you know, if you're a brand new player, you don't even know what these commanders are, right? Like you don't even know who Duga Leong is. You don't even know who Nevsky is, right? These are all commanders that aren't even in the game for you, right? Um, Boudica Prime, Legendary Boudica, Legendary Joan. These aren't even 
characters that you can see in kvk1 or when you first start the game right so if you go up against you know players who've been playing for four years who have all these super powerful commanders and we have all this like maxed out gear right like my cpo is just all gold and everything right it's just not fair right so you know the developers are constantly trying to um, make this better they're constantly trying to you know improve matchmaking and and whatever and you know is matchmaking better now than it was two years ago i think it, it is do they have a long way to go probably i think that it's constantly going to be a battle that they're fighting so with that being said let's talk about pay to win okay is rise of kings pay to win the answer is yes and no can you pay money for an advantage yes you can okay so but that's kind of an open and shut case right there but what really matters is a kingdom's performance in the kvk right that is winning or losing there's no like winning as a solo player right uh, there is no solo game mode here where you can be like the best now of course you could be like the king of the number one alliance in your kingdom uh, but that's not really like you know that's an accomplishment for pre kvk like early game that's kind of cool uh, but the reality is that a kingdom has to work as a cohesive unit in the late game. And a lot of times the king title is going to be passed around to, you know, players um, that are, you know, I guess trustworthy, but who are also like who understand the game really well and can help guide the kingdom to victory when it comes to KBK. Right. And I will say that, you know, it, just because you're a well player doesn't mean you're going to win KBK. KBK is an entire like if you're one well player or you only have like a handful of well players in your kingdom and then you go into kvk without a plan you're going to get stomped by a kingdom that is actually organized who actually knows like where should you build your flags where should you build your fortresses how should you progress across the map to claim objectives and deal with you know land barriers like mountains like rivers um with the increasing cost of the next flag right i've seen i've been in tons of kvks where you know there are kingdoms that have tons of power on paper because they're whales and they don't actually like know how to strategically advance beyond you know a pass opening or they don't take that pass in time and what I'm talking about if you're a new player I apologize I'm using probably terms that you don't really understand but um the, there are passes that kind of gate off different parts of the map whether it's your home kingdom or you're in kvk uh, and these passes open at a certain amount of time and you know if a kingdom is not organized um it may take them longer to take the pass and progress through it you know so there's a lot of different things that there is actually whether you know there's a lot of people that are very um jaded when it comes to rise of kingdoms because there have been a lot of updates that have been quite negative in the community so there's you know a lot of jaded players are not going to like when i say this okay just to be completely honest with you but um there is a lot of strategy that comes into winning kvks yes if you have a kingdom full of whales sure that's gonna have a massive advantage um but there's other kingdoms full of whales as well and a lot of times we'll see really massive kvks happen where a lot of the whales are put up against a lot of the whales right so um there are what's called imperium kingdoms in the game and that is essentially just the top 30. like for example in this kvk we have kingdom 2244 they have this little uh golden emblem next to them that means that they are an imperium kingdom they're a top 30 kingdom uh and a lot of times you know and i don't know if i'll be able to find an example off the off the bat for this uh for the example of this video but uh, there are times where like you'll see two three four different kingdoms that are imperium all put up against each other so yeah like the short answer is can you whale in this game yes can you pay to win well depends on how you define pay to win right like can you pay to be stronger as a player of course yes you can uh can you pay to win the kvk not really right not really you do need strategy involved there and as a free-to-play player there are still many things that you can do to support your uh your kingdom to win a kvk just by being online by helping the alliance by joining rallies joining uh, garrisons and you know just being present and playing there's a lot that free-to-play players can do so is the game pay to win the short answer is uh yes on a personal level but no on a kingdom level and that's really what matters it doesn't matter like it, you can have 200 million power or you know 2 billion power uh, it doesn't really matter if you're losing kvks because then you're still losing in all the pvp content that matters and that's pretty much it i think i covered all the questions in this video sorry if this was more so rambling and going off topic hopefully i answered all those questions sufficiently and as objectively as i can i tried not to include any sort of bias here um it's very easy for me to be jaded as well as a player who's been playing for years i just want to kind of just speak the objective truth about the game right now is it worth playing yes i think so especially 
especially because it's free like you might as well play it at least give it a try and see if you like it and if you stop having fun with it then just stop playing that's pretty much how I look at it right is the game dying no is the community big and active yes is there are new players joining every day yes is the marketing team great and keeps this game alive yes are they still releasing new updates to keep the game interesting yes is the game pay to win sort of in a way uh you can't really pay to win the group pvp content at least not for very long eventually you'll go up against a kingdom that's stronger than you who has a better strategy so the short answer is kind of yes but also kind of no and is rise of kingdoms good yes i do think the game is very good i've been playing it for years guys if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other players who are curious about this can find out for themselves if you're new here consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video especially if you are a brand new player i have hundreds of videos and guides on rise of kingdoms so go ahead and check all those out especially my beginner's guide it will be linked in the description below if you're brand new and you want all of my tips on the best way to start the game also comment down below your thoughts on this topic if you're a player who's been playing for a long time what do you think about the answer to these questions is it worth playing is it good is it pay to win let me know in the comment section below i would love to hear from you guys and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace